All right, good morning, Wellspring. I invite you to stand as we start our service this morning. Hope you all are doing amazing. Welcome to everyone joining us online. We're so grateful that you are choosing to be a part and participate in the fellowship of worship and partaking of his divine nature together with us here. I want to start by reading a scripture. So I just invite you to get comfortable, start turning your heart towards the Lord, widening the eyes of your heart, or even in person, go ahead and look around, even just see who we're worshiping with, because we're doing this together. Because God is really good, even for those of you online, if you're with another person, just look around, say, hey, I'm glad you're here. And let's just in the room, just take a look around. We'll, you know, usually we'll, we do this after worship, but we can just take a moment, just look around and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. We're here to worship together. It's God's redemption for all of us, even as you're looking around. Just recognize that God's doing something and he's moving in every person that you're making eye contact with. And so, Lord, as we've recognized one another and your move in each other, we lift our eyes to you here this morning. So let's turn our hearts, open our ears to receive his word. It says in Hebrews 4, chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near. Let's just think about that for just a moment. This morning, let us then with confidence draw near. Think about his body, his blood that he's given for us to come and enter in. Let us draw near. Holy Spirit, we just ask right at the start, would you give us confidence to come into your presence, to draw near. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. It's a throne of grace this morning. We're not approaching a judgment seat where God's ready to whack us with a hammer or punish us for our sins, but it's his inclination, his desire, his longing to draw near and express his mercy and his grace to us. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm sure each one of us has a need. And even within our region and our world, we've got plenty of need. And so for us as a body of believers, Wellspring, we've got the opportunity to host the presence of the living God this morning as we approach him his throne of grace, and receive from him both mercy and find grace today and help in our time of need. So let's open our arms together. Lord, it says in your word, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So right from the start, as we draw near with confidence, we're confident and hungry for this, your nearness. We say to you, our hearts are open. And we receive from you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said together loudly, amen. Let's worship.
moment we long for your nearness we say our hearts thirst for you and you alone God, we've come to worship you and you alone we find our joy in your presence our peace in your presence our healing in your presence, our wholeness in your presence, who we are in your presence. So our prayers make us more aware. Holy Spirit, we say to you our hearts are open. Would you come in? speak. 
we draw near to you, you draw near to us. We thank you that you move at the sound of our voice. You hear our cry every time. So we sing these truths. You come at the right time when I least expect it never So I would I be surprised when you deliver or oh, every time yes it does on mountain tops on mountain tops you stay the same come on sing it out Amen.
before me. Will you go? You go before me to prepare. You are 
I think it's a surprise. I wondered why you were wearing the dress. Oh, I know. I got dressed up for it, he said. <laughs> um, so I think it is a surprise. And you beat me to it. I was going to say, let's take a few minutes to give them a round of applause and cheers and thanks. But thank you for doing that. Yay. Good. All right. All right, so I'm Kathy Minerly, one of the elders, and Amy's here joining me too. Amy Harris is one of our elders. So we want to thank them, the pastors, for their dedication and faithfulness to Wellspring. And when I say faithfulness, I wrote this out, so I would say it as I want to say it. Pastor Rick is in his 36th year here at Wellspring. And Wes is in his 23rd. In, a, in addition to um, shepherding and teaching our body, Rick's passion, calling, and giftings have also led him in the global prayer movement and the passionate pursuit of revival in Connecticut and New England over the years. And in addition to teaching and shepherding and leading and overseeing our ministries here, Pastor Wes, a second, sorry, his call and passion is to the nations, supporting our missions and bringing kingdom impact outside the wells of Wellspring and into the community and the world. Yes, you can sit down. <laughs> they've been a committed team to each other and to us as they've weathered so many changes over the years and challenges, personal, corporate, cultural, ministerial, as well as changes in staff and leadership <laughs> over the years. Through it all, they've remained steadfast in their covenant with God to lead and serve as he has called them. Like us, they are imperfect people, but to know them is to know they daily seek and pursue our perfect God in order to serve him and to serve us. They continually allow themselves to be guided, transformed, and inspired by him. And like the servant in Matthew 25, I believe our master God looks upon them both with happiness and says, well done, good and faithful servant. We say the same to both of you today. And we're thankful they're not done yet. They're not, yeah, not done with us yet. So now, behind every good man is a? Good woman, right. So, Debbie and Pam, would you come on up? We want to honor you as well.
So Pam and Debbie, we want to thank you too for your service and commitment to Wellspring in the many vital roles you have and continue to play as strong wives and mothers and ministry leaders here. Most notably, Pam in her role in missions, finance, and as our church administrator, and Debbie in leading and developing our prayer and Bethesda ministries. For you both, Proverbs 31 comes to mind. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Amen. <laughs> to you both, we say many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, though you're both very charming and beautiful still. <laughs> but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring praise at the city gate. So please accept these flowers as a token of your reward from us. Thank you. All right, so pastors, would you turn your attention to one of the screens? <laughs> Many inside and outside the congregation have recorded messages of gratitude to you. We want you to take a look at this one sample, this very special sample that speaks for all of us. the mouths of babes. You can't say it better than that. All right. So also, as a token of appreciation from the congregation, we sought the artistic giftings of a couple of our members to give you, create for you, and give you a lasting remembrance. Amy's going to do that right now. Good morning, everybody. Um, so from our house here at Wellspring, we have gifted and talented artists who um, have decided to bless you guys with those talents. Um, Ella Bragg created a painting for you, Rick. And if we could put that up on the screen so everybody could see it. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. And Wes, Brooke Arnold, um, created for you um, this. But then she also had a creative burst. And I don't know if that is up. Do we have that? OK, well, that's for you. <laughs> Maybe we can put it up another time. Um, yeah, so thank you. Oh. So as another token of appreciation, we have yep, good gift cards for the pastors and their wives to your favorite restaurants, and another gift card for you to spend as you wish, just in whatever brings you joy and fills your tank. Whether it's wood to carve or biking gear, whatever it is you'd like to do, but we wanted to bless you with it. You fill your tank, you come full for us, so we're glad for that. Okay, all right. 
So um, would you join me as I pray? And just a prayer of blessing over the pastors, okay? Lord, we thank you for Pastor Rick and Pastor Wes. You are God of the past, present, and future. We thank you for your faithfulness to Wellspring and to KBC in the past and for what you're doing now and what you will do. We say we want to be aligned in every way with you and your plans, purposes, and power. We believe Pastor Rick and Pastor Wes are here by your call and for such a time as this. We ask that you would draw their hearts into deeper communion with you than ever before. Yes, Lord. Open their ears, minds, and spirits to your leading. Give them courage and discernment to follow. Inform and inspire them to help prepare us in this ministry for the days to come. We say we stand with them. We've declared over this body that we want to be a people ready and prepared to offer ourselves freely on the day of your power, and we ask that you make us ready. We speak our blessing and assurance over our pastors as they lead. We declare over them that they are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. As the days ahead reveal the darkness getting darker, equip them to shine your light brighter. We say they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear the heat that comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. As shepherds of a house called Wellspring, to the dry and thirsty around them, we declare streams of living water will flow from within them. In Jesus' name and God's glory, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you all. So we are going to continue the service and still have our teaching and wonderful service. Um, I'm going to give them a chance to regroup. So I'm going to call forth the offering. Before I do that, oh, wow. Oh, that'll, on a minute, yep, okay. Well, yes, all right, so Jay-Z's reminding me. Um, after the service, please join us in the cafe for cake. And there'll also be like a... Um, uh, the pastors will be there. We can see their gifts. There'll be a video playing with more of those messages that people um, loaded for the, sent in for the pastors. And there'll also be like a post office station set up where you can write your own thank you cards or give, leave gifts in that for them. And for anybody who can't be here today or is watching online, I encourage you to still send your cards and gifts and we'll make sure they get to the pastors. Okay. So um, before I call for the offering, just... As a congregant, um, thinking about us continuing giving, I know we have the word of rising gas prices, inflation, stocks are down, and our budget is down. So I just want to encourage us, myself, that even in these times, we will not fear. Pastor Rick told us last week that fear and faith can't operate at the same time in our brains. And like the widow who gave first, she was literally scared for her death, for her life, and gave what she had, the last of what she had, to the Lord. Um, I'm just speaking that to my own spirit in these times and just want to encourage all of us to just even go deeper and choose faith over fear in these uncertain times. So um, would the ushers come forth, please, with the offering plates? Thanks. What do we say next? Thanks. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought I prayed after. All right. So, yes, Lord, thank you for our gifts and offerings, Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh. And I just say that over myself, over each of our households, and over this household that you will provide. And like the widow, Lord, who trusted you and had faith, taking that step is what released supernatural provision so lord in our giving today we believe the same that as we give 
and even if we have to dig deeper to give. We choose faith. We say that you are our provider, even our supernatural provider. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue to celebrate God's faithfulness and his goodness. All right, let's put our hands together. you to greet those around you uh, with the love of the Lord. 
before you're seated. Well, we're going to ask the kids to meet Miss Jen and Miss Chris Ann over here. We want to release you to your class, to your classes. <laughs> wow. uh, I just can say, I think, for myself and Wes, we just want to say thank you, and we were pretty surprised. So. Uh, <laughs> I turned to him when Kathy said, I've been, I've been here 36 years. I was, I was 33 when I came. So, yeah, so I've lived here more than, longer than I lived before I got here, in more ways than one. Uh, if you're new here today, if you're a guest, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you're here with us. And, um, should find some uh, welcome card, a welcome card in one of the seat backs in front of you. Uh, would encourage you to take that, and um, if you'd like to, just fill it out with your details. You can take it to the welcome desk, which is right outside these doors. And if you give it to them, they have a gift that they'd like to give to you. And uh, the purpose of that is just simply so that we can get to know you better, um, and we, you can learn more about what's going on here at Wellspring. Um, along those lines, we've moved our baptism service back to the 19th of June. We had been tentatively thinking that we would do that on the 5th. That's uh, June 19. Um, for those of you who are considering being baptized and you'd like to be part of that, uh, just you can call the church office or office at wellspring.net and... Um, we can let you know about the details and preparations for that. Uh, so baptism is planned now for Sunday morning, June 16th. Um, there'll be a lot going on in the cafe afterwards, not just uh, the kind of stuff that Kathy shared about, but also uh, there's uh, tables with lots of opportunities uh, for you to sign up for things. Um, and one thing in particular uh, I want to highlight, uh, there's an exploring prayer class uh, that Linda Geit um, has put together. She will be uh, teaching four Monday nights uh, during the month of June. That's beginning uh, June 6. And, um, you know, as I shared last week, uh, we learn to pray by praying. And um, Linda has learned to live by praying. She's navigated... Uh, her own faith journey and uh, coming out of um, you know a fair amount of trauma in her own childhood by just learning how to connect with the Lord and to live by that relationship and the guidance and direction that she receives in prayer so um, she'd like to share those um, lessons with all of us um, and those four classes will be Monday nights um, in conference room Two starting at seven o'clock. So those are the announcements. Uh, join me in welcoming Pastor Wes. <clears throat> yeah, thank you all. As Rick said, we were surprised. Um, yeah, I've been here twenty-three years um, on staff, but but Pam and I actually came fifteen months after Rick had been here. Um, and I obviously wasn't on staff, but that summer, that very first summer we were here, you asked me to fill in for you, preach while you were on vacation. So 
I think I was 26 at the time. So I've been here a long time too. <clears throat> this is home, your home, your family. This is where we want to be. So it's great. Um, well, uh, well, let me just ask. Do you guys want to have fun? Who wants to have fun today? All right. Now, do you really want to just have fun or are you just saying that? Good. All right. I'm sorry. I quote Seinfeld too much. But not that there's anything wrong with that. So. No, I just thought today we're going to continue in this series, May Your Kingdom Come. And, and I just I really feel like there's an opportunity to, to, to have some fun. We didn't know at all about this uh, greeting, so it's already fun for us. Uh, for, for, for me, I get to go home with gifts, um, gift cards. And so regardless of how this goes, I get to go to a nice dinner. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have some fun. <clears throat> so first of all, just let me bring greetings to you from Jenny and Joe Phillips. Uh, Pam and I were with, with them a couple weekends ago um, down in uh, Houston. Um, we were, they were letting us stay at their house while we were at Amy, Amy who sang this morning, gave us the gifts. Amy's son had a wedding, and I performed that wedding. Um, so we were down there. So greetings from all of them. They plan to be here actually in a, in a few weeks. Um, they're going to be up here, so they'll be here in the service. And also then from there, we went to visit Jeff Collins and family. So greetings from Jeff Collins and, and Millicent and all their family. They will be here. He'll be here again for another Breath of Heaven uh, camp meeting in October. We've set the dates, October 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Um, so um, yeah, greetings from all of them. And uh, it was just... Um, I represented all of you down there, but I had the privilege of being there personally, so <laughs> that was good. Um, all right, well, last week, kind of, well, very spontaneously, um, we ended up taking an offering at the end of the service for uh, Guatemala, for the family that we were going to help uh, build a house, and I don't know if it's been reported yet, I think it was reported in the e-news, that um, the spontaneous offering was over $4,000 that you guys gave. So, <clears throat> so with the 3,000 that came in from the golf outing the, the previous day, um, this family has a house. And uh, I mean, has resources to build a house, they will be building the house for them. So um, yeah, so, so grateful for that. And so, you know, we've been in this series, we've been, we've been calling it May Your Kingdom Come. And um, we've been saying we need to give God something to work with. And as I was thinking about that this week, the situation in Guatemala, I thought, the Lord gave us something to work with. All right, here's an opportunity for you to step in and give God something to work with. Like, he gave it to us so that we could, could, we could respond. And, and, and I, he's so desiring for us to partner with him and to step in um, to this, this aspect of giving him something to work with. That may your kingdom come um, is, an active, is an active prayer, not a passive prayer. So it's, it's an active. And I want to continue in this series talking about something that's quite common, quite very actually common sense and understood in our world, and that is sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping is a phrase that, that we know. Um, read an article just on Friday about it on, on finances, and um, it was, they said in the article, this is common sense, right? It should, should be. And, and that's true of the kingdom as well. That's true of God. But what's interesting is the passage that I'm going to talk about today is actually uses it in a little bit different sense. Um, first of all, I, I like the concept. We all understand the concept, right? I mean, you, like for instance, I know that I am not going to have any tomatoes in my garden this summer because I didn't plant any. I didn't sow any. Well, I don't even have a garden. So, um, so that doesn't... I, I like the way Pam refers to it. She likes bountiful gardens, the ones where um, other people come and say, I hear I have too many tomatoes, and they give them to us, you know. <laughs> Or I'll find a bag of zucchinis in my, in my office that Pastor Rick dropped off from his garden. Those are really good gardens. Yeah. But, but we understand the concept, sowing and reaping. Without sowing, you cannot reap. And, and if you sow a little, you're going to reap a little. And if you sow a lot, you're going to have a bountiful garden. And we know that that's true in the economy of the world. Uh, if it's finances or whatever, whatever it might be. But I want to look at, uh, at, at 2 Corinthians um, where Paul talks about sowing and reaping. But before we start on that passage, we're going to start on a, a chapter before that, a few verses, chapter 8, before we turn to chapter 9. So chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, um, Paul is talking, he's writing this letter to the church in Corinth. That's why it's called Corinthians. It's sent to the Corinthians. 
but he's talking to them about people in another region called Macedonia and the churches there and how they have taken an offering to help the impoverished believers in, um, in Jerusalem. So if you follow all that, in Jerusalem there's a, there's a drought, there's famine, there's also intense persecution to the believers in Jerusalem. So the churches in Macedonia took up an offering to help them. Okay, that's the setting. Okay, and this is what, this is what Paul writes about the situation, beginning in uh, uh, verse 1 there, chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Do you have that, Cindy? Okay, there we go. All right, and starting in verse 2, that's fine. In verse 2, it says, In the midst of severe, a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up to rich generosity, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. All right, we need to stop and look at these verses for a minute. It's just... Well, quite honestly, it doesn't make sense, all right? Let's just be honest. It does not make sense. In the midst of severe, very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty resulted in rich generosity. All right, do you understand that? The, here, here's, he's saying this is, this, is the, this is the batter, all right? Let's say, let's say we're making a batter. I got a big pan, pot here. I'm going to make some batter. And let's see, the first ingredient is trial. So we're going to put some trial in there, you know, a lot of trial. Well, then I've got, I've got to get another severe. I've got to grab this bundle of severe and put that in there and stir that all together. But that's even not enough. It's, I've got to get some very over here. I've got some very on the shelf over here. I'm going to pour that in here too. So I have very severe trial. That's the ingredients here. Now let's see. Um, let's, get some, let's get some poverty. I've got a lot of poverty. So let's just dump a big amount of poverty in there. Stir that all in. Uh, maybe that's not enough. Um, we need to get some, what else are we going to put in there? Extreme. We've got some extreme. So we're going to put some extreme too. So now we've got extreme poverty, very severe trial, and then we're going to pour in some joy. Right? We're going to pour joy. Joy's going to fill up all the way to the top. There's nothing left on the top, right? But then, it's, then I've got this thing over here called overflow. So it's called overflow. So I'm going to pour the overflowing joy on top, and it's just pouring all out, and it's overflowing joy. But it's overflowing joy, very severe trial, and extreme poverty. I stick that in the oven. I wait 15 minutes at 350. I pull it back out, and now I'm going to eat this. And what am I going to eat? Mm, it, tastes, it tastes like generosity. Not just generosity. It tastes, it's got that ri it's rich generosity. Do you understand how the ingredients don't result in what we would think is what he's tasting? Rich generosity doesn't come from a very severe trial and extreme poverty. It, it, we don't add, it doesn't add up. It, I, I'm saying, I'm not just being facetious, I'm saying it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up in the natural, right? It doesn't add up in the economy of this world. And then the next verse. Not only does it well up to rich generosity, I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. How could someone give beyond their ability to give? But this is what he's sharing. So this is the context that Paul is saying. This is what happened. I went to the Macedonian churches. They're in extreme, very uh, extreme uh, poverty. They have severe trial, very severe trial. And yet they're overflowing joy. It's the only thing that's overflowing. I mean, the poverty says the money's empty. The trial says their, their spirits, their energy, their, their situation, that's empty. The only thing overflowing is joy. And the result of that overflowing joy, doesn't matter what the circumstances were, it still could result in generosity. In fact, what is called rich generosity. Even beyond what they were able to give, they gave. So that's the context that Paul is talking about to the Corinthians. All right, so remember, you guys said you wanted to have fun, right? So don't, don't, don't get all heavy now on, the, on, on what I'm, I'm saying. We're going to have some fun here. So that's the situation, and Paul is talking to the Corinthians. But he goes on to teach more and more. And so we're going to jump ahead to chapter, chapter 9, and we're going to pick up in verse 6. So you want to jump to chapter 9, verse 6? This is what this is. Remember... Remember this, Paul says, 
Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, the context here is actually about financial giving. That's what he's talking about, this offering that was taken. But this principle applies across the kingdom, all right? Finances aren't in any other, don't have their own category of their own. Kingdom principles work. If I give away love sparingly, I reap sparingly. If I give generously, I reap generously. If I give away help, if I give away service, whatever it is that I do, it, it, it's the same principle. So let's look at this principle. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. And like I said, we all understand this context. If I plant just a couple of seeds, I'm only going to get a small harvest. If I plant a lot, I'm going to get a lot. But what's different about this passage, it's not talking about investing. It's talking about giving away. This is an offering that was given away. It's talking about giving away. In an economy of our world, that's not sowing. That's giving over. That's giving up. And, and the, the rule is, and I mean the actual economic rule, is what I give away, I no longer have. Right? What I give away, I no longer have. So if I give generously, I don't reap generously. I, give, I have less. If I give sparingly, then I have more for myself. Right? That, I'm just saying, that, that's the reality. So what is it that God is saying here? What is it God saying through Paul that's different about God's economy? Because we're talking about actual giving. We're talking about uh, serving. We're talking about taking a heart that says, I'm going to put you first, someone else first. I'm going to care for those needs first. That's the context that we're talking about. First of all, let's take a look at this. Sows, whoever sows sparingly. The word sparingly can also be translated stingy. So we're not talking only about quantity. We're not talking about quantity. We're talking about how the heart attitude, the desire is to give. If I am stingy, it's not about how much I have and how much I give. It's about my, my heart attitude, my heart posture as I give. Am I clinging to what I have and just sparingly, stingy to give a little bit? It doesn't matter how much I have. It doesn't matter how big my account is. It doesn't matter how much my availability is. It doesn't matter about how much my ability to give is. Let's talk about the heart attitude. If I give sparingly, if I give stingily, then I'm going to have a sparingly return. I'm not going to have the return on that. However, if I give generously, which again is not talking about prosperity or volume, it's talking about our heart attitude. If I give generously, like I want to bless, and go back to the story we just talked about, the Macedonian churches, extreme trial, severe poverty, or I think it's severe poverty, extreme trial, their heart was to give, overflowing joy. That was a generosity that they were given. That's why they could over, it, could, it could well up to rich rich generosity generosity and stingy it's the heart attitude that paul is talking about here it's the heart attitude that paul is talking about here we know that because of the next verse the next verse which says god says each of you or paul says through god each of you should give what you are what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver he's talking about the heart attitude but back to, the sowing and, back to the sowing and reaping. If you sow sparingly, if you sow stingy, let's talk about what that is. Stingy, like I said, is clinging to what you have. There's, a, there's an aspect of poverty. Poverty is not having. Prosperity is having, right? But a spirit of poverty is different than poverty. And a spirit of generosity is different than wealth or prosperity. Or poverty is not having. A spirit of poverty is a fear of not having or the fear of losing what you have. And that causes you to cling. And that's that. That's, you may have extreme poverty, like the Macedonian churches, but the desire to give is different than your resource, or what you feel is your resource. Okay? The same thing is true with generosity. You may, have, you may be prosperous, you may have a lot, or maybe you have a little, but if you had desire, if, the gener if you have a generous heart, that's different than what the, the amount is that you're talking about. So what Paul is talking about here is a spiritual dynamic. The spiritual dynamic of, of clinging or releasing. What we, what we have, we release, and the Lord can multiply that into generosity. But let's talk about this a little bit further. Yeah, let's step on to the, the, the next verse again. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
Let me just make one uh, uh, caveat on that. It's, we could read that and say, oh, so I don't have a desire to give, so I don't need to. God only likes a cheerful giver. I would say if you have no desire to give, you need to go to the Lord and say, God, God change my heart. <laughs> it's where, where our heart is because we know what heart, the God, the God's heart is. But he's not asking you just to do it reluctantly or out of compulsion. So we don't just give reluctantly. Each should give according to what they've decided to give not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Do you know the word cheerful there? The word from the, in the Greek that's uh, translated cheerful only appears once in the Bible, only appears once in the whole New Testament. And um, it's, it's the word transliterated is hilaros, which is where we get the word hilarity or hilarious. So God loves a hilarious giver. God loves a hilarious giver. Isn't that great? God loves a hilarious giver. It's a, he understands that this doesn't make sense in the natural, in the economy of this world. But there's something to that. I mean, why is it hilarious? Because, because it doesn't make sense, right? But, but tell me this. If you were here last Sunday and you came forward with an offering, were you thinking of just the sacrifice or you're saying, was there joy in your heart to give? The joy of being generous. The joy of wanting to bless someone else. I'm not talking about how much. I'm talking about the desire to bless. Did you have joy in your heart to bless? Was there joy in the blessing? Was there joy in bringing God glory by helping other people? In fact, was there even an aspect of where God, it says God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a hilarious giver. I mean, that delighted the Lord to see us come forward and lay that offering uh, on the altar last Sunday. God loves a cheer cheerful giver. He loves a hilarious giver. Most of us, when we think about giving, we think about what we want to get is past the angst of giving to the freedom of giving. <laughs> but God says, I want you to be so, my delight is that you would actually be, it would be hilarious to give. It would be, it would be just overwhelming. It would be hilarious why? It's, it, why is it hilarious? Because it's, it's comical. It, it doesn't make sense. If I give this away, I don't have. But you're telling me that if I give this away, I'm going to have more. How, how does that make sense? It, it, it's not the world's economy. It's not the world's economy. And if it's not the world's economy, then we need to look at why and how is it God saying this? And what does his economy look like? So let's move on to the next verse, verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things... At all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. So God is able to bless you abundantly. It's almost like Paul is trying to be a motivational speaker here. So that in all things, at all times, having all you need, all the superlatives are here, right? That you may abound in every good work. Every good work. Well, a couple verses, a couple words here. The word abound is actually, I don't know why they translate it abound here. It's the same word that in the last chapter was overflow. Overflowing joy, abounding joy. It's the same word. So you have, God is able to bless you so you will overflow with every good work. Yeah. Now, he begins the verse, there's two bookends to this verse. God is able is the first and the last phrase in every good work. Let's look at first, God is able. God is able. This doesn't say God will. It doesn't say God always will. Now, we could interpret that as being whimsical. What do you mean God is able to? Does that mean he's going to bless Julie, but he's not going to bless John? You know, he's just whimsical about it? I think the way to understand that is that it's conditional. That if we step in, he's explaining the situation, what he's already, he's explaining more what he's already talking about. If you, and if we so generously then we can step into the conditional fullness of that verse, of that, of that principle. And if we sow sparingly, God is able to do that, but he responds to the generosity, doesn't he? He responds to the generosity. So that's the one bookend. The, the second bookend, the end of the verse, says that we overflow all these, all that we have, all that we, have, all that we need at all times for all things so that we overflow in every good work. It's an overflow of stepping into the kingdom purposes of God. It's, it's, I'm generous so that I can step in more into generosity. 
I'm giving, I am supporting, I'm loving, I'm serving so I can step more into the fullness of what that is. And, and I can abound, I can overflow in the very things I step into. We don't have to overflow before we step. We step and then we can begin to overflow. I've talked about this before, that it's not the overflow of God's kingdom that we want, it's the flow of God's kingdom. See, the overflow says, I need all that I have, I need all that I have, I need, all, I need to get every, everything, all my needs met first. And then out of the overflow, I want to bless. Out of the overflow, I want to be generous. Out of the older, overflow of time, if I have time, if I, if I can help somebody. That's overflow. That's good. It's, it's, it's great. It's, it's actually very good. But that's more out of philanthropy than it is saying, I'm going to give myself sacrificially to be part of what God wants to do to open up a channel of kingdom's flow, of heaven's flow, into, into me, through me, into this world. That is a different statement to step into the flow. And the flow actually is what God wants us to open up, the flow of his kingdom. Let's look again now at, the la at last week's offering, that, that offering for Guatemala. Uh, we, 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 we added it up, right? It was four, over $4,000, 4100 and some, maybe more, some more has come in since then, I'm not sure. But let's say hypothetically someone gave a $4 gift because that's all they have in their, their wallet. They came forward, they gave $4. Maybe that was a generous gift. Maybe it was a very generous gift. Their heart was in it. They gave everything they had at the time. And, and their, their generosity in their heart, their spirit of generosity, God received that. Maybe someone else wrote a check for $400, but they did it with a stingy heart, with an attitude of like compulsion. I don't know how it adds up. I'm grateful that I'm not the one to do, to do, to do, to do the judging. The Lord is the one who judges that. But I don't know how you get to 4,000. Now, I know the people who added up will say, well, this is exactly how you got to 4,000. I added the numbers. But what happened between the heart, the gift, and the total, and now what's going to continue to happen for the family in Guatemala, it's beyond our measure. It's not just about measure. It's about what we've opened up in a flow, a cheerful flow, a hilarious flow. And that doesn't mean, just because I'm saying hilarious and cheerful, doesn't mean that it isn't sacrifice. In fact, sacrifice is a great aspect of the kingdom. That when I come and I say, you know, this is all I have in my wallet, and I don't know, or I'm going to write out this check, but I don't know, um, this, is going to be, this is going to be a sacrifice to do this. But I choose to do that. It doesn't mean I have to be all, you know, hilariously jumping up and down, but you're like, in your heart, I want to bless. I want to put that person first. That sacrifice is something that opens up a door in, king, in the kingdom. That sacrifice is an open door. You know who, you know who proved that to us? Jesus. Jesus. Lay down his life as a sacrifice. According to this principle of sowing and reaping, he made the most generous sacrifice. And he re reaps the greatest return of generosity. Because it says in the scriptures that Jesus was the firstborn of the, res of the resurrection. He made a way as the first fruits of the res resurrection for all of us to come as sons and daughters, for all of us to come as brothers and sisters to follow him. There was no way... And he made a way. How did he make a way? By sowing generously. And when he sowed generously, sowed his own life, that he opened up a channel then that is for us to flow into that. There was no way for us. We could not make the way. But in his sowing generously with his own life, he opened up a flow of the kingdom. It wasn't the overflow. He didn't stay on his throne in heaven saying, okay, I'm God, I can do anything. Now you have a way. He actually sacrificed himself to make the way for this principle to come forth, using this principle for our, our eternal life to come forth. So sacrifice, cheerful doesn't mean there isn't a sacrifice in it, but there's a willingness, there's a desire to partner with the Lord. There's a, there's a desire to bless someone else, bless others, bless and partner with God in his kingdom. That's what the desire of Jesus was, and that's what his desire is for us. And so when we step into that, whether it's as simple as an offering like last Sunday, or whether it's something much more dramatic in the way we serve and who we serve or what we do with our lives, if it's done generously, then there will be a reward. Take a look and let's continue to read. Skip down to verse 10. Let's look at this reward. Now he who supplies seed for the sower, right? You're sowing the seed. The Lord is the one who supplies now he, God, who supplies seed for the sower and bread for food, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. 
You will be enriched on every, in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That, that's a pretty good return on that sowing, if you sow generously. Because it says that God who supplies seed will give you, will increase your supply of seed, your storehouse of seed, right? He will increase your store. And he will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Well, we like that. We like it when he increases our store. We like it when he enlarges our harvest. Look at what he increases. He increases your store of seed. In this illustration, what is seed? Seed is what you're sowing. Seed is what we're giving. Seed is what we're giving. So when, when, when we give, we open a flow, even ability to, the Lord increases our ability to give. When we give, he increases our ability to give. Our, our mental ability to give, our physical, our time, our energy, our desire. I don't know. Again, it's not quantity. It, it, it can result in quantity, but that's not the measure. It's that ability of our heart to give. When, when, when he, he who supplies seed and we give that seed, we sow that seed generously. If we sow it sparingly, we're not going to get that much. But if we sow it generously, then the Lord increases our ability to, very, to step into the very thing that we, we just gave God to work with. We give God something, we say it's not much, but if our heart's in the right place and we continue that path, we train ourselves, we open up the a flow from heaven to increase our store of seed and to enlarge our harvest. I like that, enlarge our harvest of your righteousness. It may not be a harvest in the natural here. It may be, it may not be, I don't know, but I know that the Bible says do not lay up treasures here on earth, but lay them up in heaven. And when you're increasing, your, you're enlarging your, um, your harvest of righteousness, you're laying up your treasure in heaven. So it does matter to our eternal lives, but it isn't necessarily what we measure in the moment and how we measure it here. For he increases our ability to give and our righteousness that, that, is, that it will be rewarded in heaven. And on top of that, he will enrich you in every way so that you will be able to be generous on every occasion. Again, that may be resource, ability to be generous, or may just be that you have a heart where you're willing to step in. Even if you're in severe trial, even if you're in extreme poverty, that you give openly and willingly, and that blesses people and it blesses Lord, the Lord, as it says in this last phrase, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Isn't that amazing? It seems very quiet in here. Are we having fun yet? This is... <laughs> I know most of you, you know these principles. I don't want, I'm not trying to, um, to deliver this like it's a new message. This is who Wellspring is. It's demonstrated last week when we're bringing the $4,000. I'm not talking to someone who doesn't get this. I'm talking to a place, a, a community that gets this. It is, you have understood this for, we have understood this as, since as long as I've been here. We were talking this week, the uh, staff uh, were talking about what we, some of the memories we have uh, in the past. And I, I remember, it must have been over 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when we first took an offering, two Sundays, we were a much smaller church, took a small offering, an extra offering to bless a church in New Britain who was really struggling and they weren't going to be able to pay, pay their rent. And two Sundays, we took an offering. It added up to 4,000 and something. I remember that number. It was 4,000 and something. And that Sunday night, they had Sunday evening service and they didn't know that we were coming over there. And we came over and a whole bunch of us came and we just joined into the service. And they were more surprised than Rick and I were just now when you blessed us. <laughs> When we walked forward and we said, we just want to bless you, and we gave them a check. That, to me, is who we are. And it has been who we are for 25 years. So I'm not talking to a congregation that doesn't get this. I'm saying, I want to continue to be generous givers. When we say, may your kingdom come, we don't want to do that passively. We want to continue to step into that. We don't want to do it stingily. We don't want to cling. We want to open up and trust that the Lord will give us all that we need at all times. To be able to continue to do the good works. And we've come out of a season where we've been kind of in hibernation for a while. And now we're saying, God, now is the time. This is the place. We're your people, right? Well, we got to continue to step into that. we got to step back into that. And that, I'm not blaming or saying this against anyone. I'm saying, as your pastor, as Wellspring, this is who we are. And this is who we need to continue to be. And that's why we're stepping into this this week, this, this month. May your, may your kingdom come. Let's just wrap up, wrap up this chapter. Um, reading through these last verses, they're so, so rich, beginning, uh, continuing there in verse 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs, it just keeps getting better, folks. Look at this. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, 
but is also overflowing, there's that word again, overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It's overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It is a witness to God. It is praise to God when we do this. It is not simply our sacrifice, but our sacrifice returns praise to God, returns help to the person receiving, returns joy into your very own heart, opens a channel for more seed. The return on this sowing is kingdom. It's kingdom sowing and it's kingdom return. May your kingdom come. Let's open up the flow. This, is, this service, verse 12, that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for our generosity in sharing with them with everyone else. So now, not only are you praising God as a result of giving this, but people, others, what you do actually causes others to praise God too. Do you want other people to praise God? Well, well, let's continue to sow generously because it opens a flow. It inspires people. It, I hope that the family in Guatemala says, praise God for these people who have sent us this money. I hope that Hope of Life, the ministry that they're a part of down there, says, praise God. I hope that many people see uh, much can happen from the seed that is planted, way beyond what we could ever measure or know. And so we want to give generously because we want to open more and more of a return on the flow of the kingdom's grace. And uh, last, last two uh, sentences here. And in, and in their hearts and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you. So you know what? People will be praying for us. When you give, you actually even get people praying for you. And their prayers for you, uh, and, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Indescribable. You can't describe it. Everything I've done here to try to explain it, I, I, words failed me, right? Paul says, look, I'm trying to explain this to you. It's, it's indescribable. I know that in the natural, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. When you give, you don't have. But I'm telling you, it's a gift from God. Generosity and a spirit of generosity is a gift from God. It's a hilarious gift from God. It is an indescribable gift from God. It brings God glory and it releases his kingdom. Again, this principle is not just about dollars and cents. It's our heart attitude what we want to do, how we want to help, how we want to bless, how we want to serve, how we want to be a, for other people more than we are for ourselves. Again, the model that we have, the very essence of who we are as children of God, this is who God is. God so loved the world that he sacrificed his son. Jesus so loved the world that he laid down his life. It's not simply for us to say, okay, I want to be close to God so he can bless me. <laughs> I think the safest place to be is in the kingdom and in his presence. But that doesn't mean earthly safety. It means partnering with him to bring forth his kingdom. It costs Jesus his life. It's the best place to be. It's the richest place to be. Rich generosity, overflowing joy. Joy is powerful. It's the only thing in all these verses that's overflowing is joy and then the result that comes from it. Joy is, joy is, a, is a fuel of his kingdom. It's a fuel of his kingdom. And so Paul tries to describe this as hilarious, hilarious giving, cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. And he says, on top of all that, generosity is indescribable. It's indescribable, but it's a gift. It's a gift. It's an indescribable gift from God. I've got two, three gifts, gift cards, all these down here. They're gifts. There's a gift card envelope right there. How many people have ever gotten gift cards and never used them? Yeah, just about every hand. Um, companies love that because someone paid money and now you're not cashing in on it. So, um, yeah, there's a gift card. If I don't use it, I don't get the benefit of the gift. Generosity is an indescribable gift from God. Let's not not open it. 
Let's open that gift. Let's use that. Let's see what happens with generosity. Let's see the return that happens. Let's see what can happen. I believe that God really is, is ready for us to move. He's ready to move with us. And he's saying, may your kingdom come. When he put this on our hearts to, to step into this and say, give God something to work with, it wasn't a, a corrective word. It was a now word. Now's the time. Let's step in. May your kingdom come. Generosity is one of the ways that his kingdom will come because it opens a flow of kingdom's resources, of kingdom's life, of kingdom's reality here in our lives. Just go back to these verses and read them over and over. It's an indescribably hilarious gift, <laughs> but it has a great return. So there are many, many ways. There are endless ways. Endless ways. You can turn around tomorrow, turn around today, leave this place, and start serving. So we just want to make sure that we give you an opportunity just to help. This isn't necessarily Wellsprings. Um, these aren't necessarily Wellsprings vision and grand strategy. I just thought we can't talk about this and not say, okay, here are some things that we're going to step into. Okay? So a couple things we were going to do. One was we were going to take an offering for, for, for Guatemala. Well, we did that last week, so we don't need to do that this week. But today in the cafe, when you leave here, there are half a dozen things that you could sign up for, that you could be a part of. It's, again, it's not about being, doing this out of compulsion or because the pastor said to do this. It's saying, God, I just want to practice. I just want to practice. I want to say yes. I want to say yes to this. And instead of just saying yes in an altar call, I want to say yes when we're talking about being generous. I want to step into that. So we just made some, some ways for you to do that. First one, we're going to put this slide up here. The first one Pastor Rick already talked about, which is you personally. Because we just happen to have baptisms coming up, why not? Maybe personally you have never been baptized. Then you want to respond to the Lord by, by giving yourself to him. So that's a little bit different than what I've been talking about, but yet it still is an act of that inward commitment. And if you would like to be baptized, there's a table in the cafe where you can sign up for that. As Rick said, you could call the office or, or email the office. If you have questions about whether you're ready for baptism, just talk to the people at the table or talk to Rick and I or just say, I'd like someone to talk to me. We've got about a month before this happens, so we'd love to have a chance to talk to you. Okay? Now, for Wellspring... There's a couple different ways. There's all kinds of ways you can serve at Wellspring and, and bless the very family and commit to the very family that we're a part of. But one is, in our, we have a care ministry, and Chris Ann will be in the, out at a table in the back, and uh, she's identified some, some specific places and ways that you could sign up to be part of the care ministry. And uh, so you can take a look at that. The other thing is simply your commitment. Many people, many of us give regularly here, and, and some of us may want to consider whether we want to give more I uh, have a more stronger commitment, or we haven't taught through this series on tithing, and, and, but we, we all ask you to consider that as a, as a way that you could give God something to work with, that you could step in generously. Now, we don't have a sign-up. We don't, we don't ask you to tell how much you're going to give. That is between you and the Lord. So what I've done is, um, I thought I brought one up here. I left it down there. We have bookmarks that we've been in the back of the seats this series. Um, there's a pile of them out there. Um, at that table. And it's just a, the May Your Kingdom Come bookmark. And we're just saying, if you want to commit to the Lord in a, in a way, yeah, take, take the, the bookmark, take one of the bookmarks just as a reminder. You could write on it what you want to, uh, to give or just put it in your Bible just as a reminder. So that's really between you and the Lord, but that's a very real way that you could commit to give, some, uh, to give something, give God something to work with and just step in more generously. Okay, a couple more things. So there's a Harford Project. The Harford Project, most of you have heard that name. It's an it's a effort in, the, in Hartford where all the regional churches, many of them suburban churches, youth groups go at one time into Hartford and, and um, serve, learn, serve, bless in the city of Hartford for four days. Um, we have, I think, probably four youth going this time. We've got about six youth, right, John? And four adults are going to help. Um, so there's a couple ways you can be part of that. You can go and help serve the kids who are going to serve, who are learning about serving and missions and all that. Um, they have a few different ways that you can sign up. You know one of the ways that's really sacrificial? Go and sign up for a session to serve in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that'll test your heart. Um, <laughs> whether or not you really want to serve those kids in the city, but giving God something to work. Don't do that stingily. Don't do that in any other way than it is worth the sacrifice for me to do that, okay? There are other ways that you can help out too at the Harford Project. So you can sign up. Uh, back there, John will be back there at the table, as well as Kirsten, who's on the board there at, at uh, Harford Project. And 
it costs. So each kid has to raise money or, or, or pay to go. Each leader does as well. So maybe you just want to help them out financially. You could do that as well. There's an opportunity to give there. Okay, so that'll be at a table. And then the last place is something we've been involved in in a long time is our Uganda ministry. Um, and you may recall, we haven't talked about this for a long time, but we can also sponsor kids in our Uganda program. Kids in Wakiso, either at the Kampala Children's Center or not, who we sponsor to go to school at the Children's Center, get a good education, a couple of hot meals, books, all those kind of things. I think it's 45 or $50 a month, or maybe it's gone up, Vic, but uh, um, Vic and Grace will be at a table out here afterwards. We haven't talked about it in a while, to our detriment, to the kids' detriment, and Vic told me this morning he's got 23 kids who need sponsors. So if you're one of those people who would like to sponsor one of the kids, the good part about this sponsorship is 100% because it's small. It's us working with Kampala Children's Center. There's no overhead. There's no cut on that. Everything you give goes toward the kid, goes for that child, okay? So you can check out uh, what Vic and Grace have in the, in the cafe afterwards. I'm sure there's many other ways, but those are the ones that we're just giving you a place to say, you know, I want to respond. I want to respond to what... What, what Rick was sharing last week, what, what I'm sharing this week, what we've been sharing for this whole series, what John shared a couple weeks ago. We've got one more week of, of this series, May Your Kingdom Come, but this is um, our faith in action opportunity, okay? And I just want to make one other comment uh, before we close here. Many, much of the, the principles that I talked about, um, I've actually, a number of years ago, put them in a book um, just because people are always asking me for more information uh, or more teaching on it. Uh, uh, what about this? What about that? And so I put it together in a book. I've got copies of the books out there. You're more than welcome to just take one. I want you to have one. If you want to give a donation, there's a, a place for a donation, but I just would like you to have those. And if we run out of books, we'll take your names. I can, I can get more books. So um, that's not to promote my book. That's to promote sowing and reaping, the blessings of the generosity of the kingdom. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Linda said it was a really good book. <clears throat> she said it, not me. But um, uh, anyway, um, everybody good? All right, good. So let's stand. Would you stand with me, please? I encourage you afterwards to join us in the cafe for the sign-ups, uh, a place where you can commit. And cake and <laughs> all the... All the love and blessings you want to give Pam and Rick and Debbie and even me. So, um, did we have fun? Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> um, so, Lord, we thank you that you invite us to partner with you. You invite us to partner with you. And you say, Lord, if we step in generously, there's no end to the flow of your kingdom. There's no end to the resources that you can provide. There's no end to the opportunities to bless and be blessed. Lord, we don't want to live stingily. We don't want to live clinging. We don't want to try to endure this world, Lord. We want to, it doesn't matter if we have what our circumstances are, like the Macedonian churches. We want overflowing joy to, rich, to well up to rich generosity. May Wellspring continue to be a place where that happens. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your faithfulness. And we ask God that we give this, give ourselves for you to be able to move. And we say, may your kingdom come, Lord God. May your will be done. May you move upon us. May heaven touch earth. May the earth be different. May our world be different because we don't live simply by the economy of this kingdom, but we release the economy of God's kingdom in all that we say and do. Thank you, Lord God. So bless us with your presence as we go the presence we stepped into in worship, the presence that we carry in our hearts, the presence that we carry in all our acts of kindness and love. Thank you, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite those prayer teams forward, invite the rest of you to be with us in the cafe. Bless you all.